Greetings, my fellow explorers of the cosmos. I am May Thobo, your guide through the hidden truths of frontier science, where equations whisper secrets and reality wears a disguise. Welcome back to the blog where physics meets philosophy and wonder isn't just encouraged, it's required. Today, we're diving into one of the most mind-bending ideas in modern science, quantum immortality, the radical suggestion that you may never truly experience death, not because of divine intervention or reincarnation, but because of the cold, strange logic of quantum mechanics. So buckle up, truth seekers, because today we're stepping into a multiverse of possibilities where every quantum event spawns a new you. To help us navigate this labyrinth of wave functions and parallel selves, I've brought in my brilliant co-pilot, Brian. So grab your coffee, silence your inner skeptic, and prepare to have your perception of reality gently or perhaps violently rewritten. Brian, the floor is yours. Thanks, May. You always set the stage beautifully. Now let's explore how these challenging circumstances will transform our awareness and what they mean for the advancement of human understanding. Imagine, if you will, that reality is not a sturdy, predictable stage upon which we perform our brief lives, but rather a shimmering fog of possibilities, a cosmic dice game where every role spawns a new universe, and every choice you don't make still happens somewhere, just not here. Now imagine that within this infinite branching tapestry there's one thread that clings to you with unsettling tenacity, the one where you never, ever die. Welcome to quantum immortality the most absurd, terrifying, and strangely comforting idea in physics. It's not immortality in the sense of eternal youth or divine grace. No, this is immortality by sheer statistical stubbornness, a loophole written in the cold equations of quantum mechanics. You don't live forever because you're special. You live forever because you can't not, at least from your own point of view. And yes, before you ask, this does not mean you'll avoid bad hair days. The quantum jitters, when reality forgets to make up its mind. Let us begin at the beginning, or at least as close as we can get without invoking a singularity or a particularly aggressive mathematician. Classical physics would have you believe the world is solid, predictable and generally well behaved, like a well-trained dog that sits when told. But quantum mechanics? Quantum mechanics is the dog that suddenly levitates, barks in reverse and then splits into two identical dogs, one of which is already eating your sandwich. At the heart of this madness is the wave function a mathematical ghost that describes not what a particle is but what it might be. An electron doesn't spin up or down, it spins both simultaneously like a cosmic coin frozen mid-flip. Only when you look, when you measure, does it choose, or so it seems. This is the famous Copenhagen interpretation, the old guard of quantum theory which says, don't ask what happens before you look, just shut up and calculate. It's like being told the universe runs on magic, but only when no one's watching. And while that works fine for equations, it makes a mockery of common sense. Enter the double slit experiment. A simple setup with two slits, a beam of electrons and a screen. You'd expect two bright lines, right? Like shadows of the slits. But no, what appears is an interference pattern. Stripes of light and dark, the signature of waves, not particles. Even more absurd. This happens one electron at a time. Each electron, it seems, passes through both slits at once, interferes with itself, and then casually pretends it was never in two places at once the moment you try to catch it. It's as if the universe is playing a prank on us. You want reality? Here's reality. Enjoy your existential crisis. Schrodinger's cat, the original mood killer. Now, if you thought electrons were dramatic, wait until you meet Schrodinger's cat, poor creature. Locked in a box with a vial of poison, a radioactive atom, and a Geiger counter rigged to smash the vial if the atom decays. According to quantum rules, the atom exists in a superposition, decayed and not decayed, until observed. Therefore, the cat is both alive and dead, simultaneously, until you open the box. Schrodinger didn't propose this to promote feline cruelty. He meant it as a reductio ad absurdum. Look, he said, if your theory leads to a cat being both dead and alive, maybe your theory is bonkers. And yet here we are, centuries later, not only accepting it, but building entire philosophies around it. Because what if the cat is both? What if you are? 
the Everettian escape. When the universe splits like a bad relationship, enter Hugh Everett, the quiet genius who in 1957 said, what if nothing collapses? What if everything happens? His many worlds interpretation is the ultimate breakup. Every quantum possibility becomes real in its own parallel universe. No collapse, no mystery, just infinite branching. You flip a coin. In one world, it's heads. In another, tails. Both are real. Both use wake up the next morning, each convinced the outcome was random. Neither ever meets the other. The universes drift apart like ex-lovers avoiding the same coffee shop. And if this happens with coins, it happens with everything. Every quantum event, every atomic decay, every photon's path splits the universe. Your body alone undergoes 5,000 radioactive decays per second. That's 5,000 new universes every second, just from you. You are, quite literally, a universe factory. It's enough to make you wonder, am I the original me, or just a particularly stubborn copy? Quantum suicide, the ultimate proof that no one else will believe. Now let's get really weird. Imagine a quantum gun. It fires based on the spin of an electron. Spin up, it shoots. Spin down, it clicks. 50-50 chance. You put your head in front of it. First click, you're alive. Second click, still here. Third, fourth, fifth. After 10 clicks, if you believe in wave function collapse, you should be dead. The odds of surviving 10 rounds are less than 1 in a 1,000. But if the many worlds interpretation is true, you only experience the worlds where you survive. In the others, you're gone. No consciousness, no memory, just nothing. So from your perspective, the gun never fires. You hear only clicks. You conclude, aha, Everett was right. But here's the catch. No one else sees this. To your friend watching, you die in most universes. They see a madman playing Russian roulette with a machine that eventually wins. They don't see the version of you who lives forever in an ever-thinning thread of reality. You have proven immortality to yourself and yourself alone. It's the ultimate solipsistic triumph. You are the last observer standing in a collapsing multiverse of your own making. The bittersweet curse of living forever, sort of. But let's not get too excited. Quantum immortality doesn't mean you'll stay young, healthy, or even sane. It just means you'll survive in some form. Philosopher David Lewis called it the Tithonus era after the Greek myth. Tithonus was granted eternal life, but not eternal youth. He aged forever, shrinking into a whispering husk, trapped in a body that wouldn't die. Similarly, your future selves may survive car crashes, plagues, and black holes. But at what cost? A brain barely clinging to consciousness, a body sustained by machines, a mind flickering in the dark, wondering why it won't stop. And here's the kicker, even if this is true, it doesn't matter. Because the you reading this now is in a high probability branch, a world where things went mostly right. The versions of you that survived asteroid impacts or nuclear winters are out there, yes, but their existence is a faint echo in the multiverse. You are not them, you are you, and you will die as all humans do in the vast majority of realities. Max Tegmark, the physicist who once toyed with quantum suicide, later admitted, I no longer fully believe in it. It depends on a mathematical continuum that may not exist in nature. In other words, the universe might not be smooth enough to split infinitely. It might be pixelated, and if so, even immortality has a resolution limit. The multiverse as mirror, what it means to be human. So where does this leave us? In a universe or multiverse where every choice spawns a new world, where every tragedy is balanced by a triumph somewhere else, where you are both dead and alive, president and pauper, saint and sinner, what does it mean to live? Perhaps it means this. You are here now in this branch where the dice rolled just so, where a calcium atom in your brain fired at the right moment, where you looked right instead of left where you survived the crash, the illness, the war, and in another world you didn't. That's not nihilism, that's meaning. The fact that this version of you exists at all is a miracle of staggering improbability. You are the winner of a cosmic lottery with infinite losers. So yes, the universe is strange. Yes, reality is fragile. Yes, you may be immortal in some distant, decaying branch of existence. But this you, the one reading these words, should probably stop thinking about quantum suicide and go drink a glass of water, or better yet, call someone you love. After all, in most universes, you never got the chance. Epilogue. The dreamer and the dream. The universe, it turns out, is not a machine. It is not a clock, nor a stage, nor even a story. It is a superposition of stories, all being told at once, all equally real, all forever separate. And you, 
You are not the hero of one. You are the protagonist of many, a flickering constellation of selves scattered across the multiverse like stars in an endless night. Some of them are happy, some are broken, some are already gone. But one of them, this one, is still here for now. And that, perhaps, is the most quantum thing of all. And there you have it. My lovers of the labyrinth. Remember, every challenge is just a stepping stone to greatness. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, so we can keep exploring together, and drop a comment to share your thoughts. Until next time, stay curious, stay bold, and keep chasing those dreams. <laughs>